Hey guys, so I'm back with the next video and it will be for the Disney Crochet subscription and finally I've just had a delivery um, after waiting I think like six weeks stupid postal strikes um, so we're going on to issue three which is the Jungle Book Classic Granny Square as you can see from what I've got in front of me, I finally purchased some stitch markers. So, yay, we've got them. Just don't do what I did. Um, make sure as soon as you take one out the box that you close the box up straight away. Because otherwise, if you drop it on the floor, you end up with a bit of a Lego situation, like where you drop all the Lego when you've just organised it. Yeah, don't do that. Really, really, really annoying. Um... So I definitely learnt my lesson and that was literally like 24 hours after I got them. Won't be doing that again. So for some reason, my yarn looks a completely different colour under the lights of um, my photography setup here. That middle yarn there is actually lime. Really strange. Don't quite know why it's that colour. All I can do is apologise. I promise you it's exactly the same in real life as what everybody else has got. And then the first one is our coral. And then we've got another white that we've been sent there. Um, I'm just going to continue to use the white that I've had from previous issues to save opening another one. I don't quite know why they've sent us half a ball. Um, but it's fine. We'll just deal with it. We've got extra yarn. I'm sure we'll use it at some point. So I guess for now, we can move on to our square. Just one more thing before we start. We'll carry on, as always, with the same hook, which is um, the four millimetre hook. I know that I've said before that I use different ones to what comes with a magazine, and that is purely for grip. Um, I don't know if any of you guys know or if I've mentioned this before, but I've actually got things like fibromyalgia and ME and things like that. So I struggle with my muscles and my joints. So I tend to go for the most comfortable option, especially if I'm crocheting for long periods. And these have made the world of difference. Um, I have seen a few people complain about the quality of the yarn that comes with the magazines. Um, all I can say is switch up your hook. Um, this is some of the best yarn that I've worked with in a very long time. Um, and I think that's probably because of the different hook that I'm using. It just glides through the yarn rather than snagging it and splitting it and things like that. So definitely worth investing. You don't need to go for the full set of the clover hooks. These are the clover and more ones. Um, I just purchased one four millimeter hook, which is around five to six pounds on Amazon. I got mine for and got it the next day, which is always great. Um, and then you can just practice using that one. It's the same hook that we're going to be using all the way through the subscription. I believe I'm just predicting, seeing as that's the way it's gone so far. Um, so that way, you can just try out the hook, see if you like it, and then do what I did. If you love it, put the whole box of all the different hooks on your Christmas list. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that's what Father Christmas is bringing me this year. We shall see. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Let's get going. So we're starting off using our coral yarn. Again, the lighting's a bit odd there. This does look orange. I promise it is the coral. And yeah, I've got my four millimeter hook here. So we're gonna start off with a slip knot. And I've shown how to do those in the other videos. So I'm sure you will manage just fine. And then we're going to put the loop on our hook. As always, if you're right-handed, non-working yarn in your right hand, working yarn in your left. So from here, we want to make four chain stitches. One, two, three, four. 
and then we're going to join them together to make a loop. We're making the loop by something the magazine calls a foundation ring. So we want to slip stitch into our fourth chain away from the hook. So one, two, three, four, it's this hole just at the bottom here. Go in through this one, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop straight through the other loop on your hook. So from here, we are going to be working our stitches into the loop in the center, which is kind of like what we did um, for, I'm trying to remember back, what did we do it for? We did it for the Moana flowers if you've already done that issue. So the first instruction here, we're going to do the chain stitches. One, two, and three. And then from here, we're going to do two treble stitches into the center of our ring. So the center is this hole here, just beside the knot of my first chain. So I'm going to do two trebles into here and we do a treble by yarning over. We're then going to go into that loop and pull up another loop on our hook. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over again and pull through the other two. And that is a treble complete. We need to do another one. So yarn over, in through the same loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. And that is the end of round two complete. So moving on to round three, we're going to make two chains. And from there, we're going to work three trebles back into that center stitch. So yarning over, going in and pulling up a loop, yarning over again, pulling through and pulling through. There's one. And two. And three. Now it does say in the magazine subscription how many times we have to repeat this. I'm not allowed to give the full pattern in the videos, so make sure you follow the instructions under box number three for how many times we have to repeat this, and then I will meet you back here when we're done. So I've gone all the way around as many times as it states under row three, and then we finish this one off by doing another two chains, one and two. And then we are going to do a slip stitch into the third chain. So these are the original chain stitches here that we first made. And we've got a V here. Sorry, I'll get that in focus. We've got a V here and then another stitch here and then another stitch here. And this is the third one. We want to slip stitch into here. So that is that one complete. We now need to change colours. So what we're going to do is we're going to fasten this one off. I'm going to cut the yarn and then what I will do is to yarn over and pull it all the way through and pull that one tight so it fastens it off. I'll see you when I've done it. So I fastened that one off. We've now got two ends. And we're now going to change colour. We need to go into the white. So I've got that one just here. And we're going to make another slip knot. So we've made our slip knot, pulled it back off of the hook again. It is now the right size. And we want to go in through one of these corner spaces. It doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to keep all of um, my yarn tails in the same area. So where I've just finished this one, I'm going to go in through here. And then I'm going to put my slip knot back on my hook, as you can see just there. From here, 
I'm going to pull that loop through to the front of my square, just like that. And then I'm going to wrap my yarn over and pull through and that counts as our first chain stitch. And then we're going to make two more chains. And that's the end of step five. So I'm going to work another two trebles into this corner. So I'll yarn over, pull through two, and then pull through the other two, yarn over again, pull through two, pull through two again. And that counts as my first three trebles because you count the first three chains you did as one of the trebles. From here, we're going to go into the next, sorry, I'm just pulling that one out of the way. From here, we're going to go into the next corner space and we're going to do a, another uh, three trebles into there. So one, two, three and then chain two, one, two and then another three trebles into the same corner. One, two, three. We then need to repeat that design going round your coral square. So I'm now back to my original corner. I've just done the two chain stitches and we're going to do another three trebles into the corner here. One, two and three and then from here you want to chain another two and then we need to slip stitch into our third chain stitch again so I'm not quite sure you can see we've got a V here a V here and a V here so we need to slip stitch into this one And again, we're going to change yarns. So I'm just going to pull that one slightly, get my scissors, cut off a tail. And I can go back in through that loop, pull it tight again, yarn over and pull it through. Pull that one as tight as I can. And then I've ended the white portion of the square as well. So now we're going to move on to using the line. So we're moving on to using the line colour now. Apologies, it does look a completely different colour on camera still. I don't know why that is, but I promise you I am using the line that is received with the magazine. Just like row two, we want to start off with a slip knot. So as always, just making that slip knot and then just pull that one tight. We don't want to put it on the hook just yet. So grab the part of the square that you've already made and I'm going to go in through the same corner as before. So we've got our yarn tail from before just here. We're going to do the same thing. You want to go in through that hole on the top right into the space that we've already got there. So I'm going to put my hook through and then put my slip knot on my hook 
and make sure that the ends are pulled tight. We're then going to pull the hook through and grab our working yarn. That's my non-working yarn. I don't want that one. And from there, one second, I just need to pull that loop tighter. It's come loose when I pulled it through. Right, from there, we just want to yarn over and pull that through. And now that one's secured on our square and then do two more chains. And from there, we're just working it the same way as round two, but with an extra addition. So from here, just like round two, we want to do another two more trebles. So one and two. Now we're only doing two, even though every other corner has three. But we've got the three chain stitches here, which would count as our first treble. From here, I'm going to do mine slightly different to how it is in the magazine, purely because I don't want a lean on my stitch and I don't want my square to curl up. So I've just done an extra chain there. And now we're going to do three trebles into this space here. So one two and three and then going to do the extra chain again and now we want to do three trebles into the corner space just here where my left thumb is one two and three. Make two chains for your corner space and then another three trebles into the same space. From there you want to chain one again and then go back into this space. Repeat it all the way around the square and I'll meet you when you get to here at the end. So I've got thrown to my final corner. From here I'm just going to do that last single chain and then do my three trebles into the corner. One, two and three and then do your two single chains and then we're going to slip stitch into bear with me I'm just going to look at the book I can't remember and then we're going to slip stitch into the third chain stitch so I don't know how well you can see there but we've got the one chain stitch, the second and the third. So we're going into this one here. It didn't go in, bear with me. It's the problem with doing your chain stitches so tight is that you can't get your hook back in. So we'll just pull that one through and then pull that through again. And we've completed the line. I'm going to tie that one off and I'll come back and give you the instructions for the next row. We're now switching back to the coral yarn. So exactly the same as the last two rows. Make yourself a slip knot. Don't put it on the hook. As before, I'm going to start into the same corner. And hopefully you can see which one that is because we've got the tail of the last row that we did. So go in through the corner, put your slip knot over, pull that one tight. Pull 
and then I'm going to pull that one through to the other side, grab hold of my working yarn, loop that one over, pull it through to make my first chain, and then I'll make another two. And then another two trebles. One. And two. I'm going to continue with what I did in the last round, which isn't in the book, and just chain one. And then we're going to do three trebles into this space here. One, two, and three. Chain one again, and another three trebles. One, two, and three. Chain one again before you go into your corner space. I'm not going to show you how to do the corner because I'm very conscious here that I don't want to infringe on copyright and give you the whole pattern on camera. Um, but I'm sure that as with previous rows, you've seen what we're doing. So carry on following the instructions in the book. Um, you'll know what you're doing for the corners anyway, because they're very similar to the other ones. And I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning. We're going to finish off just like the last row with a slip stitch into the third chain stitch from the previous row and then I will show you how to do the next row. So I've got to the end of that row fastened off in the same place as before. We have now got a lot of ends that we need to weave in but we can do that all at the end. Um, from here, we've got two more rows the same as these ones, so I'm not going to continue to show you how to do them because I'm sure you're aware from now. Obviously, you're going into this space here, this space here, and this space here, and then going into the corner and doing your two chains to make your corner space. But if you so wish to, continue to do your one chain when you're doing the ones in the middle as well, otherwise you will find that your square starts to curl up like this. So I'm going to continue and do my last two rows and then I'll come back and show you how to do the border. So I've done my next two rows and that takes us up to the end of round six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, definitely six. And we're just going to do a border on there. Um, our square should be around 12 centimetres at the moment and you all know from the other squares exactly how big they should be again not wanting to fringe on any copyright so we need to put in this last round and hopefully it'll make that square a little bit bigger to bring it up to the same size as the other squares that we've already done so last colour is going to go back with the coral And I'm just going to make a slip knot again. Again, not putting that one on your hook just yet. So take your corner space where you've just threaded your yarn off for the last row, put your hook through your corner, and then put your slip knot on the hook and pull it tight. And then pull that one through and we're just going to chain one for there and then chain another. We're now going to do a half treble crochet UK stitch into every stitch all the way round. And we've done these before in the Moana square, so yarn over. Go in through your first chain and pull up a loop, yarn over again 
and pull through all three loops on your hook. Just to show you again, yarn over, in through and pull up a loop, yarn over again and pull through all three. What I will do is I will do one in every gap as well because otherwise we're going to end up with a gap on our border which is not what we want. So I'm just going round and doing those half trebles. So they currently look like this. I'm going to go all the way to the end just to show you what will happen at the corners. makes a nice change in your crocheting to not have to count how many stitches you're doing. I'm normally so preoccupied with numbers in my brain when I'm crocheting and this has been one square where I don't have to count anything which has been really nice. I'll just pull on that yarn, it's getting a bit tight. I apologise, I do realise I've been quite quiet here while I'm doing this. Just trying to get to the end of the row as quickly as possible, so I'm not wasting too much of your time on video. Nearly there. So I'll just want one to go in, it won't go in, into this stitch. And then obviously you've got your gap again at the corner. So just go into that one and then we turn our work and just carry on back down the other side. So your corner spaces are going to look something like this. They won't look like an actual corner just yet. They are going to look slightly rounded and we will get around that by blocking the squares eventually and that's something that I'll explain in another video. Um, so for now, just continue going all the way around your square. When you get round to the end, slip stitch into your first stitch, cut a tail off ready for weaving in your ends and, and then I'm just going to show you how to weave in all of your ends so that they're hidden and we haven't got all this mess on the back. Be back shortly. So there we have it. I've done the border all the way around and it looks something like this. I did add a few extra HTCs into this corner because I found it was closing up like this and it didn't look the same as the other corners. So I've just done that just for some extra consistency. I know that you've probably finished your square by now, so I do apologize. But if you haven't, that might be worth doing. But you can just judge it and play it by ear. I just wanted to make mine look the same in every corner. So I've got terrible news, guys. Whilst we might have finished the square and the crocheting, we're left with this mess. And I totally feel your pain. This is every crocheter's worst nightmare. We all hate to darn in the ends. And I do actually get why people say to do it as you go, because it's then less hassle than doing it all at once. But I'm not like that. I have to make things harder for myself. So I suppose let's get on with it and show you how I do it. So first things first, we need our darning needle. I know you've seen mine before. It's got a slight bent edge on the end. Personal preference as to which ones you use. These are mainly used for amigurumi, which is why I've got them, because I used to make quite a lot of amigurumi, which are like basically crocheted toys that are worked in the round. 
Um, so these are just the needles that I've got and just the ones that I'm used to using, but it really doesn't make any difference. So I'm going to start with the piece of yarn that we've got left right in the centre. So just a way to thread our needle just to show you. If you wrap that yarn around your needle like that and pull it as tight as you can. If you then grip that between your two fingers, you can then wiggle it to go through. Oh, just realised I'm off camera, I do apologise. And then pull it through like that. So it can be easier than for some. Some people like to wet it and thread it through. It's completely up to you. So we're going to hide our threads in these stitches here around the back. And we're going to go corresponding colour by corresponding colour. So we're starting off with the coral. I am going to thread through this one here and go all the way to the end. Just to pull that through. I'm then going to go back on myself again, but I don't want to go back onto this end one just here. Otherwise my last row will come out. Actually, that's not my end one. We can see that this one, so I'm just trying to catch it on the camera. This is the end one, the last one that I went through. So I am going to go up through this one as it's the next one. And then just go through here and weave through and I'll turn around again. And pull that one tight. And again, just like before, we can see that I've come... Sorry, I keep going off camera. We can see that I've just gone on... Th this is my end one. So I'm going to skip that one. And I'm going to go all the way to the very end again this time. Turn back around. So again, my very end one is this one here. So I'm going to go into this one and go right to the end. And then obviously skip your last one. And I'm just continuing doing this until I feel I've done it enough times so that those yarn tails are hidden. And I've done that four or five times now. I can pull that tight and I feel that one's fairly secure. So what I'm going to go ahead and do from here is I'm just going to cut that one. That one's fairly hidden in there. I don't know if you can even see the end there now. It's just here, that point there. But when that stretches out a bit like that, it's completely gone now, completely hidden. And I've just hidden the first one of those yarn ends. From here, if I turn the square around where you can see where all the mess is, we want to go up row by row. Ideally, it's completely up to you. So what I will do with this other coral end, and I'll show you from here how to just move on to the next one. Just bear with me while I just thread my needle. See, I should have done it the other way that I just showed you guys how to do because Trying to wet it and thread it through just doesn't work for me sometimes. There, so I've got that one through. And you can see it's coming out from this point here. Make sure you pull it as tight as you can before you start threading it through. What I'm going to do for this one is I want to again go around these stitches but we can see it's up here. I'm not just going to pull it straight from there because otherwise it will gather everything together. 
So I'm just going to go up through this stitch and then I am going to go through this stitch here like that and then what I'm going to do is the same as before and as I've just shown you I'm going to go through all of these if I can this one's very tight There we go, so I've gone all the way to that end. I'm really sorry, the reason I keep going off camera is because I'm filming in a different place to what I normally would. And my setup is currently on a bed um, because people are using the other rooms that I would normally use. So I'm literally leaning over a bed while I film this. It's really very uncomfortable. Um, so I keep moving my hands up to my eye level and realizing, no, I shouldn't be. I need to be back here so you can see what I'm doing. I apologize. I'm never going to be the most professional YouTuber at this rate. So, um, again, we need to skip that last stitch that we've just done and go, this one's really, really tight. Go all the way to the end again. I'm just going to continue to do that to hide that one in. I won't show you that on camera now because you've already seen one. When we go up to the next colour, which is the white, we're going to thread the white in through these stitches. And then the lime will go in through these stitches. Just going back to the white. Obviously, we've got a white, white thread here. That's not focused. We've got a white thread here as well. So as we just did with the coral, we're going to bring that one down through these and then we'll go around these stitches with the white as well. We don't really want to darn the ends in of, say, this white one here through the line because it will stick out. You'll see, be able to see it under the stitches. So that shows you how to darn in those ends. And then obviously when we get to the end, we've got our last piece of coral, which is what we've done our border with. And then for the coral, I'm just going to go in and out as we have done them before, just weaving through the edge stitches. So good luck with weaving in. I won't need to show you when I'm done because it won't look any different. It will just be the same square with the, with the ends hidden. So that is the end of issue three, the Jungle Book square. Good luck with it. I hope it all goes well. And I guess I will see you again in the next video. If you just make sure that you like the video, please do leave a comment if you do need any help because I'm here to help. And then if you subscribe to my channel, it makes sure you get a notification when the video for the next square comes out. I look forward to seeing you then. Happy hooking!